Welcome everyone to the Crystal Starnes Show, airing on Just TV with your host, Crystal Starnes. Today, we have two wonderful guests that are coming on the show, but first I wanna say thank you for tuning in. I'm so happy you're here. And I hope you all had a great Valentine's Day this week, and I hope you spent time with your loved one. And I also wanna mention Balance 7. Balance 7 is a nutritional product that gets you back to optimal health, and you can find Balance 7 at balance7.com. It's balance and the number 7.com. And if you want a discount, just type in Crystal 10 and make sure you let them know that you found out about the supplement on the Crystal Sarn Show. Well, let's right. welcome Tim McGarry and hey, Robert. Hi, Tim. And Robert Paul Gay. How hi, are you Tim. guys doing? Hi, Crystal. How are you? Good. <laughs> Good. I'm so happy you're here. I'm excited to hear about your new album and everything that you're doing. Oh, yeah. So Thank we're, you. Uh, yeah. We're, exci we're excited about this project. You know, it was really Very. Good. Yeah. Yeah, and I've listened to some of the songs, and they're amazing. I like the one about the praying. I love that song. I was you listening to it a bunch last night. <laughs> you got me praying now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's a kind of a reverse paying thing, praying thing, Crystal. It's like uh, I'm praying because you're driving me crazy. Okay. <laughs> I like the beat of it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, like, I had to look blasting. <laughs> My kids are like, what are you doing, Mom? <laughs> it, it could be anything. Anybody can relate to you're driving me crazy. And, of course, it makes you want to pray for deliverance sometimes. Right. Well, right. sometimes. But I, I actually, and that, I, and for me, it's like, it's more like, you know, like, you get to that point one time in your life where just like, you know, everything sort of gets like, you cut, you're sort of caught up from all the things you've done. You know what I mean? And now so I'm like, now I'm accountable and I'm like, oh man. Yeah. You know, that's the whole thing. Like, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, some I, I cross a lot of lines, you know, close to the edge is the way that I drive. And sometimes those things work out and sometimes they don't. So, you know, the thing is it's, like. Uh, it's biographical. <laughs> It's biographical. biographical. And so, yes. yeah, so I guess the thing is like, and then sometimes you just got like, well, what do I, what's my option? I, I got one option, you know, you got me praying now, you know, because you know, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I'm in that place. So, but no, yeah. it's, just, it's a fun, you know, I think it was really fun. We, uh, we met Robbie and I from a mutual friend, Mike Kinnaman in Nashville. And my, Mike, uh, back in the day was their manager and tour manager with the Johnny Van Zandt band for what, 16 years, you know, and yep. so that they're good friends. And so, and Mike said, you know, Hey, listen, I, my, my friend Robbie, you know, he told me about Robbie. He said, let's, can you, you know, go write some songs with them? So we, you know, we, we brought a few songs before that, you know, uh, me and him and they were decent, but they weren't like blowing her hair back, but they were like, you know, but it's like, it's like the first ones you start with, you know what I mean? You just, you start with the, you know, the co-writing. And then um, he came down here to my studio and we just had like the best time, you know, it's just like, it really, it worked, you know, it was like organic, you know, uh, we respected each other's talent, you know, um, you know, and the thing is we just had, we had the same vision is let's, let's make the best record we can. Let's make, you know, so like every guitar lead, every guitar lick, you know, every, you know, drums, chorus, lyrics, you know, stuff like that, they'd stick out. And I think we came from, and we, we were like, you know, we're pretty happy with this, this album. You know what I mean? I think it's fun. It has a lot of different songs, you know, it's like, you know, you have some that are like, you know, like when love comes around and then you have stuff like, you know, you know, she's long gone, you know, which is like country with a rock, you know, with a rock chorus and, you know, and life. And so, I mean, and so we should, you know, we make, we make it, we made it like, so, you know, not every song was the same. I hate yes. that. You know, you go to an album, it's like, wow, that song sounds just like the first one. And, <laughs> and that third song sounds just like the second and the fourth. Uh -huh. you know? uh, well, but but the record companies used to make these artists do that. They, oh yeah, they, they tell them like, well, see if they all sound the same, they'll always know it's you on the radio. Well, mm. yeah. Well, oh. how about maybe <laughs> boring? <laughs> boring, yeah. So we so we you know we worked on you know get, you know getting some. And we had we actually had eight songs, but we weren't the eighth one. We weren't like we wasn't like. We wasn't ready yet, you know what I mean? We're superstitious. Don't lie, yeah. we're superstitious. So we just said, how about lucky number seven? That's a spiritual yeah. number. Yeah, let's do that. So we did it. Right. And, yeah, I like that title. I like yeah. it. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about you, Robert. Um, I haven't, you know, I just, I'm just now meeting you. I met Tim before because we had a show before, but 
And I also want you to also talk to you, Tim, but we'll start with Robert, if that's okay. Like just give a little no, bit. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh, sure. Um, well, my history's, uh, I started young with, uh, Johnny Van Zant. I think you probably know Johnny sings for Skinner now. Um, but, I the, first band he had that had a record deal was called Johnny Van Zant Band. And I was the main songwriter along with Johnny in that band. We made uh, seven records and we toured everywhere all over the world. Played with any band you can think of in the 80s and uh, early 90s and even late 70s. So some big shows and I uh, had a great time. But uh, uh, when Johnny went to sing for Skinner, I decided to... Uh, kind of do things on my own and uh took a long time to get it to a point where I could uh get myself to write with songwriters in Nashville and uh I got that lucky break by knowing Mike Kinnaman like Tim says and if I hadn't known Mike believe me I'd have never gotten the door um it's a tough place to write songs you really have to know what you're doing and I thought I was a good songwriter obviously but uh I was not I was a terrible songwriter when it comes to the guys that you have to write with in that situation. Um, Tim can tell you, it's just, uh, it's brutal. Mm -hmm. It's just brutal. And they, and they will make fun of you if you're not, if you don't have your chops, so to speak. <laughs> and that's what I like about Tim. You know, he don't make fun of you too much. He has a, <laughs> he has a term called, well, that's unfortunate, which means that, you know, you just played something that, uh, you might have thought it was good, but it was really unfortunate. <laughs> no, but, I, but <clears throat> the thing is, really, I mean, you know, we had some like we know some lead guitar for us, like that one song that "Kicking Down the Road" one, and um, so and he was doing some leads, and I was just like, and I go, you know, it's just not angry enough. I mean, we need like some, you know, like man, you know. So I go, I go, you play slide, and he goes. Well, I've been, you know, sort of working with, but I don't really play slide. I go, well, let's try it, and <laughs> and, and he killed it. He did great. It's like, oh, uh, it's like definitely what the song needed. So the thing is, you know, we stretched ourselves a little bit. Um, you know, uh, we really worked on like we do leads and stuff. And the thing is, after a while, like you know, he'd do a lead, and he knew it was like I could do better. You know what I mean? I'd have to tell him, you know, because like it was That's okay. Right. I was close, but I was, but you know, and, and so. And so he would do it, and then he get like, okay. And then when you get the one, it's like, okay, that's it. You're not doing any more. Right. That's the one, you know. But um, you know, he's a really great guitar player, so it's really fun when you're playing with pros. You know what I mean? To, to come, for them to come up with great licks and you know and smart leads and stuff. So that was uh, so it was easy for me. And we had, you know, we had a uh, David Johnson on the bass guitar, who was a total pro. He played with the Neville Brothers. Uh, Dal Nut playing. Um, he was the. Uh, drummer you know phantom he's, he's like a metronome the guy's like he's just a total pro and then my friend ray nesbitt like um after we had the thing all produced see a lot of times when you you know you, you're in your own studio and you're producing it what happens is i've listened to the song like a hundred times and <laughs> you sort of miss stuff because you're just you listen to it so mm -hmm. what you do is you bring somebody else in and my friend ray nesbitt and ray nesbitt audio he uh um he helped he did some more tweaking you know, saw some things that I was missing, you know what I mean? Or something I can, I can enhance and get better. And that's what you do, like, you know, because it really comes down to is get all the pros, you know, all the really good people, you know, uh, with their, with their talents to put this record out and have it sound the best it can be. Mm -hmm. you know? and right. I, so, so the thing is like, and, and beg them to work for half of what they normally charge. <laughs> <laughs> No, how do you like when you do songwriting i guess one of the questions i have how do you put the music with the song like do you come up with the tune first or do you get the lyrics first then you figure out music how do you how do you put that together and how do you figure out like that's always been my question well like, for me it's uh i'm a music guy i'm a guitar player so it's mostly riffs and i'll if i write a riff and i send it to tim he can tell you if it's uh good or bad pretty quick same for him if he calls me and plays something over the phone i mean i know within at least 10 15 seconds he's on to something or, or he's, he's, not. Not. Mm -hmm. he's not i mean for me it's uh um it, you can't actually say where it comes from or like you know you have a process that's always the same but mm -hmm. i do like having music going because when i hear music um I uh, it makes my lyrical part of my brain open up, you know, to possibility. Okay. 
But yeah. sometimes, like, you know, like, I mean, you know, you, you get, you hear something funny, like my friend, when he got, you know, he got married and his old grandma went to his new bride and she's like, and this is like, now, darling, because you want a long and happy marriage. And she's like, well, yes, ma'am, I do. Well, honey, I'm going to tell you the secret. And she's like, well, what is it? She goes, you got to be good to your man because you don't feed the dog at home. He'll be digging in the trash. I went, oh, my God. <laughs> like 90 years old. I'm like, what? You know, so, of course, I, I, had to, I had to write that down, feed that dog, you know, and, and I wrote it with this guy named Buddy Brock. So that's, you know, that's something you heard something. It's like, you know, right. and you bring it that and you bring it in. Um, but most of post-it the time, notes. post-it notes, yeah. post-it notes, you know, or like my, you know, but the thing is I can never turn it off. Like, you know, he'll tell you the same thing. I mean, uh, if I get up at three, three 30 in the morning and I got a, an idea in my head, there's no way I'm going back to sleep unless I put something on my phone or come to the studio and you know, do something to record it or say something. And then, you know, then I go back to sleep. Otherwise I'll just be up till, you know, till dawn, you know, till mm-hmm. breakfast time. So, right. and, and that's the beauty. That's, there's a blessing and a curse to songwriting. Blessing is that you can write songs that communicate with people. Like, you know, you listen to our songs, you have fun, you, you know, you like it, right? And that's great. The curse is I can never turn it off. So it's like, so, you know, once, once you go down that path, it's like, you know, it's like you took the blue pill or something, you know, you're, right. you're in. <laughs> yeah. But I, and he's telling you too, when I went to Nashville, I thought I was a songwriter because I had mm-hmm. high record deals. I wrote yeah. a deal. I, yeah, no, oh, yeah, I wrote songs. I'm big I, time. Yeah, I, 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 had a, I had a couple solo records. Yeah, I thought you know, and I was up there. I was totally schooled. Oh my god! <laughs> and when I, and I, when I first met Mike Kinnaman, I went to his office and I, you know, I, I, well, I called up. I was doing a festival up there, and I said, "Hey, Mike, I'm I'm in town. Can you come see me?" And I I had sent him some songs already. He wasn't too impressed. So I go, "Okay." He goes, "Well, come on in. Let me talk. Let me see." So I sat down. He goes. Get a guitar off the right of the room wall. You can play me one chorus or one song, you know, one verse, one chorus of one song. So I played this song called Hole in Me, and he really liked this. So I only played the whole song. And then that night he took me to this cool party where they had all these, like, you know, heavy uh, producers. Uh, Doby Gray was there, you know, like, you know, we're singing, we're singing with him background. It was like, so, it was so much fun. And then, and then she goes, okay, Tim, play your song. I'm like, my wife's, my wife's with me. She's like, you're going to play your song? These are like the cream of the crop of Nashville and I go yeah I go well you know you get you get a shot so just you know take it so um but I was you know it took me about two years going up there like I used to go up like because I was still working as a paramedic um and a firefighter so I had um uh I and I could get a two weeks off with the vacation and the way that works and swaps and stuff I go there about three to four times a year for about two weeks at a time sometimes two and a half and I'd write about 20 25 songs and it took me about two years to really get it you know what I mean? Like, you know, and these guys, and luckily I had some really good guys that were patient with me, you know, so I wasn't like, you know, um, and uh, it was good. So I, you know, and I learned a lot of stuff and that's the kind of stuff, you know, all that writing of like doing that for 11 years, you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. getting it. And then so when me and Robbie, you know, got together and, you know, with his talent, my talent, you know, sort of put something together, you know, it, was, it worked out really well. So, yeah, um, right. I'm really happy with this project. <laughs> me too. I think it's awesome what you're doing. And, um, you know, how do you get together? I mean, do you live near each other or? No, no, a long way. <laughs> uh, he, oh, li- wow. he, he lives in Naples and I live in uh, Northwest Florida, or as we call it, lower Alabama. Lower Alabama. He's in a panhandle. It's yeah, pretty rural. Alabama. Rural is the word they use out here. Yeah, mm-hmm. rural. <laughs> So, but I, I grew up here. I'm actually uh, uh, lived most of my life in Jacksonville, mm-hmm. uh, and I. Uh, but I grew up here in a small town, and uh, so when I retired, I moved back home because it's it's quiet. Yeah, mm-hmm. quiet. But uh, when I have songs, I just uh, we do this the Zoom thing, or mm-hmm. even sometimes just over the phone, just to. I have this or he has that, but mm-hmm. he's so prolific. He calls me a lot more than I call him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, but what about I, this? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it, it's, hey, I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I, I, but it, I'm a good sounding board because I have heard great songs and I've heard bad songs and I can really tell the difference at this age. So mm-hmm. it helps a lot. Right. It helps a lot. I mean, the thing is like, you know, and then, there's no ego, 
I mean, no. that's the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is, when you do co-writing, and this is anybody that co-writes, seems like the ego stays out the door. Because it really comes down to it, like, what's, what's the process? I mean, what, what's, the, what's the end result? And the thing is, that's why I bring all these, like, players in and other people in to help me with, you know, the project. Because I want it to be the best it can be. I don't care, if, you know, if I put a couple extra names on it, you know what I mean, if, if we need to. And, um, you know what I mean? But I know that, you know, this, and, I've, and I'm very excited about it because this is the first album project I've ever done. I've done lots of singles. Like, we just have a, a girl, Leo Alonso, her new single, Found, came out with a video uh, yesterday. You know, so I wrote that with her and tracked that here. And my friend Missy and, you know, Muscle Balsam and Leah Graves and Prentice and, you know, all these other ones. And I worked with some people, like, in the, in the country of Georgia. So, um, and doing singles. But I never did a whole album. And this is like, this is like, and this is like, we it was sort of uh, thought out, you know, and we did these songs, and we, you know, we came up to them, and you know, we, and as we started writing them and stuff like that, you know, this is a winner, this is a good idea, this is not a good idea, and so we picked the ones that we wanted to work on, and then we just, we just, you know, put our heads to the grindstone, man, and just like put these things together. But at the mm -hmm. same time, it was fun. You know yeah. What I mean? Right. I mean, because it's my studio, so there's no pressure. Right. You know, we're not paying like a hundred dollars an hour. You know, it's just like just. You know, if you take a break, take a break. Let's have some lunch, you know, so, you know, whatever. But the thing is, when it came to work, you know, we, it was working time. Like, you know, I'm, he'll tell you, I'm sort of a workhorse, you know, that's like, <laughs> that's like. <laughs> There's another word for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you can use your own imagination, Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I, I do, I, I can never sit still. It's like, you know. It's no. Like, yeah. I am you know, a musician that can go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. he's, he's really passionate i got i guess about it you know i am too I'm you are too but you know how to turn it off <laughs> oh, yeah. i gotta go to sleep yeah i know well i mean i'm i'm doing so i'm, I'm just getting over covid so like you know I'm like sorry. You know, and I, no it's okay we're just, you know we're, we're better now it's just you know i've had all my shots so it doesn't last real long but you know but it was but, great he didn't call me for two days i know <laughs> I, it was like yeah it was, it was a uh it was weird because me and my wife, we're like, and he'll tell you, we're doers. We're just getting stuff done all the time. Woo! And it's like, and we had like three days of like, we did nothing but like nothing. lay in bed and watch like the Hobbit movies and stuff. Like, was, that was it. That's all we could do. I was just like, you know, because it wasn't like, you know, so, but just like no energy. I just, right. you know, and I'm like used to, I work, you know, I, you know, I work out at the gym every day, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, and, I, and I'm like. I mean, I, you know, I'd break breakfast and be exhausted. I'm like, what the heck? You know, it's like, yeah, it, just, it was weird, you know? So, but the thing is, um, you know, uh, I, I always, you know, I, cause we're, we're already writing songs for the next record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we got a couple already. So, you know, I have one called tonight that's done. Um, America, um, I think we do American made. We're going to do the song pain. We're about putting that into, you know, redo that one because, you know, I want Robbie to be on that one. And re, sort of redo that, make a little more rock out of it. So you know, and then, and then we have a few others that we're working on together. And so like you know, so after this one goes, well, you know, and what happens? Like you know, it's great that I have a guest room. So Robbie comes down, just stays here. I feed him. I make the best coffee in Florida. Yeah, always ground beef. <laughs> guest room is more like a prison cell. Don't come out. Don't come out till I tell you to play. <laughs> well. The thing is, yeah, I know it's down there. Well, the thing is, like, when I'm doing stuff, you know what I mean? Like, am I, I'm in this, like, zone. Woo! You know what I mean? And I know, okay, so, so I, I got to put this in. I want to do this one. I want to do that, you know? And, the, yeah. and then, and then, and then, um, I'll put some vocal parts on it. And then, like, Robbie comes in. Okay, let's, let's, I need you to do some, uh, uh, um, rhythm parts, you know, some, with some crunch, you know, it does all that. And then, okay, go away. Let me do some more stuff. Go okay. away. No, no. <laughs> Well, go out to the lanai, you know, and then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I, sometimes you open the door and all you hear is, uh, <laughs> uh, you're yeah. looking, oh boy, we're in yeah. trouble now. Yeah. And then do, you, goes, um, do you want to talk about any of the songs that's on the album, like that maybe has a meaning to it? Do you want to tell the audience about it? <laughs> maybe, maybe one of your best ones. I don't know. It's uh, up well, to you. It's uh, go ahead, Tim, if you want. But for me, there, there are a lot of uh, furniture in the room songs that we're talking about. Some things happen has happened to me. Some some of these things have happened to Tim. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, 
I don't know. I, I, I love when love comes around. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do um, too. I, I do think too. the thing is, I mean, I, I open, I mean, I, it, songs have different stuff. Like the love comes around is like one of those kind of songs to me. That's just like, you know, I have five sisters. My, my, well, I had my sister, my sister passed away, but, and so, and, uh, and I have a lot of friends, uh, uh, in their forties and fifties, you know what I mean? They're just like, I I'm never going to find somebody. I'm too old, you know, and that kind of stuff. And, and I, and I, and my sister just turned, I think she's 63 and she just found somebody and it was, and it's like, the guy's great. You know, he's a widower, you know what I mean? And it just, and they just, it was just like, they're just two peas in a pod. So the thing is, and I thought, you know, how, you know, love comes around, man, you know, and is that, so that, you know, the whole thing is like, you know, it always, it always comes up easy when it's right from the start and like a stray bullet that goes straight to your heart. You didn't see it coming, but you're ready for it now. Because somehow, some way, love comes around. You know what I, I mean? That. And, and that, yeah, it's, yeah, right. And so, like, girls, like, oh, I love that song. I love that song. <laughs> so that's right. You know, they, I, I mean, take so, credit for the whole song. That's right. <laughs> so um, it's a yes. good song. It is. Yeah, I mean, a it, song. It's, it's a sweet it's song, song, you know. It's like that. And then, but sweet. then, like, you have a fun song, like kicking down the road, just like you know, yep. like the angry guy, or or like she's long gone. That's sort of fun. Um, the, biographical for sure biographical. the life you know the song life you know it's like the chorus you know it's like we're going to live this life don't believe that lie you're never good enough you know what i mean and i want people to know that yes because people always think oh i'm not good you are good enough that's and right you're good at the right the place you are now you know you are good enough and stop saying you're not i mean it's a big lie you know what i mean we mm -hmm. are what's who's the worst critic yourself you know what I mean, right? Every little thing. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's that whole song was just, and it's, you know, it's just about like, you know, like, you know, I'm riding blue skies. I mean, like, you know, you 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 can choose how you want to live. I'm really optimistic. You know what I mean? And you know, and and very proactive. And you know, and and my wife's like, you know, she's a little bit more like, you know, tentative. You know, like, well, you know, cause we, like when we built our house, you know, she didn't think we we're going to get the mortgage. We're getting the mortgage. We are. We're gonna have, we're gonna build a house. She didn't think it was going to happen because we went through a lost the business, which we did. So the same thing. So um, with this record, the same thing is like, you know, we're, we're going to we're going to make a great record. And, uh, you know, and we just and we we just pushed ourselves to like our our best selves. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, lyrically, you know, sonically, you know, all the guitar leads. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I love his leads. I mean, he's a he's basically a shredder, you know, so like, you know, which he's really good at. But like I was saying, like, well. <laughs> Nobody <to> cares. <laughs> well, I just said no. You had you had a couple things to shred on a little bit. Oh yeah, but, but mostly, like I said, like let's <laughs> let's do like really good leads. You know what I mean? And that's what we'd work on. And he did. And he gets these things are like you know the kind of leads that you hear it and you remember it. You mm -hmm. can almost sing that guitar lead when you can do that. You know what I mean? That's the stuff that's like oh, that's like really good. You know? So yeah. So um, and he did great. So I mean, I you know. Um, but I'm, I'm like, what about the shredding? No. Yeah, shredding. Yeah, there's a there's yeah. a cheese grater and some cheddar. So he, get you a, <laughs> he's like, get your own YouTube channel for that. <laughs> Stay what off our. Advice, what kind of advice would you give um, other artists out there that's just starting out? Go ahead, Rob. You start first. Well, I, I have a advice for uh, the kids that are starting out. You're going to get a lot of grief. You're going to get a lot of people tell you that, uh, you know, unless you're like a prodigy at something, of course, which most of us aren't, mm -hmm. you're going to get your parents, your friends, especially if you get fanatical about it, like Tim and I are. Mm -hmm. And I always have been since I was eight years old. You can drive people crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're like, OK, OK, I get it. You want to be you want to do that for a living. But pursuing it is tremendous work. And if you don't believe in yourself, you'll get knocked down and you'll give up. So I say, if you think you're good enough, go for it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Right. That's it. Uh, my, I got a couple of things I tell like a lot of young performers. Uh, number one, whatever, any time that you go out and sing, it's 100%. Yeah. It's never anything but 100%. You don't go out there... You know, you're on when you when you're on, you're on. And I give you a bunch of examples, but you know, but um, that's one. The other thing is to don't worry about the fame. Worry about the music. You know, yes. if you're getting fame, can go. 
You know, I mean, I know guys that, like, you know, I mean, that's, that, the reason why I got into songwriting part, you know what I mean? Because I do love to perform. I really do. I love singing. I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm a good front man. I can, I get the crowd going. I have lots, you know, good stories and we can, I can bring them in. But the thing is, like a songwriter, think about it. Like today, when, in today's um, you know, era of everyone's got a camera phone that, you know, like if you scratch yourself in an inappropriate place and they got it on film. Okay. You did? Oh. Yeah, and then it's like, and it's like, hey, why well, he's the he's the butt scratching McGarry. The whole world knows that, you know. It's like it, it would sort of suck, but a songwriter, you get to hang with the artist, you write the song, and you make oh, the money in the great. publishing. But no one knows who you are, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's another avenue too. But the thing is, you go for it one hundred percent. The Dalai Lama always said, like, whatever you do, you do one hundred percent. If it works or it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. The thing is, the benefit what you learn, you know. Some of our best lessons are the things that didn't work, things that we failed at. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And don't be afraid of failure because that's that's a lie. You know, people are like, oh, what if what if ha what happens? What happened? You're going to go to prison? <laughs> You're going to go to hell? No, it just you try. And mm -hmm. so you give it your all, you know, um, and every time and then just learn and be, you know, be humble. Like, you know, you know, and and go to people that are like professionals and watch what they do. Why, you know, how, how they how they crafted that song, how they craft that lyric. You know what I mean? Because like, a lot, of, like yeah, big, big. a lot of young songwriters, we have a thing called uh, Furniture in the Room. There's a song I have, American Made, um, and I'll just do the, because you'll get this. So what they want, you want to give pictures of stuff. So here's the lyric. The smoking pipes of a Harley and the rumble that they make. It's the laughter of a child, her first July parade. You got a baseball diamond on a hot summer night. You got a hot dog and an ice cold beer. And you're singing the national anthem, holding back a tear. Now you can see everything I just sang to you, right? Mm -hmm. I and can. You're making yeah, me cry. <laughs> so the okay. thing is, and that's what, and that's what I had to learn in Nashville. Yeah. When I wrote that song, I was like, "Oh, I'm getting it now. I got what you've been trying <laughs> to stick, you know, in this thick Irish skull, you know, like, oh yeah." And um, so, and I always use that thing just, to, you know, as a as a point, you know, because you can see all that stuff, and that was basically what that what they do a lot of times. So, you know, so do that. A lot of young songwriters, and they have like hard rhymes, you know, like "I love you" and "You was a fool" and da, 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 you know, like okay, stop that, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then and they always talk about emotions. Well, no one can see an emotion, and not saying no. that you can't put it in there somewhere, but you got to put some visual, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you know, like uh, you know, um, uh, and the and the first line is always important. Like, uh, and uh, the, the first two lines are the critical part of a song. And like, you know, and when love comes around, your love is like a ghost that haunts you at night. Uh, you say, like, what? what you can you stop say? right there. Right there. I mean, like, wait a minute. A love is like a ghost that haunts you at night. And it's just like, you know, those things like, it's like, you know, that thing you can't see, but, so, you know, and you just can't, you're not coming around. So, I mean, that was the kind of stuff that I've learned. So all those things combined, like in the years of writing songs, and I've got, I've probably written a thousand songs, you know what I mean? I've got, I got three solo records and, you know, and I got like six, 700 songs that never made it. And people always go, oh, you got a really great songwriter. I go, you haven't heard the other 900. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> didn't make it, so, you know, I mean, like, you know, I mean, Dolly Parton writes a song a day. She's been doing that every year for like 40 years. Wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah so, I mean, she's thousands and thousands of songs and a lot of them you never hear. But mm -hmm. the thing is you keep on writing and every once in a while you get that one. It's like, oh, that one, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, and I think that's it. So just, you know, give it your all, give it a try. You know what I mean? It doesn't hurt. And you can always be a songwriter. It doesn't matter if you're 18, you know, or you're, or you're 70, you know what I mean? That's right. Because the thing is, matter. and actually when you're older, you got like a lot more experiences to pull from, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But right. it doesn't mean that you can't, um, you know, and then, and just, and just go for it all the way, you know, because, you know, even if it doesn't happen, as you get older, go like, well, you know, I really gave it my all, man. I had a great time doing it, you know. I went to a lot of places. I played in front of a lot of people, you know. I, I really, you know, put myself out there. It didn't actually work maybe the way I wanted, but man, I had a great time. I learned so much about me, you know, and that's mm -hmm. like that. And I think that's important. Well, I think that's really great advice um, to the young people out there that they just need to keep trying and don't give up. Don't give up. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where can they find you like your songs um or do you have any tours coming up or you know any events that you want to talk about robbie sure. 
Um, we, uh, the website name is robertpaulband.com. Um, Facebook is robertpaulband uh, forward slash facebook.com. Right. Um, you can uh, go to the band page and uh, there will be links to all Spotify, Apple, iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, yeah. Amazon, SoundCloud. And you can click on, click on those links and you can buy it. You can download it. Uh, we're doing downloads right now and uh, mostly giving CDs to uh, presenters like yourself. So, yeah. All right. uh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Well, yeah, thank you. Welcome. That's you know, <laughs> no. without 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 people like you, Crystal. We we would be banging our heads against the wall. Yeah, That's yeah. A I appreciate um, oh. the, you know that night. I'm happy that you're on the show. I, I like both of you so. <laughs> Oh, and I well, like helping you as well. Yeah, well, maybe so we'll much. come back. We'll come back after it does a, a, a thousand downloads, and we'll. Yeah, and then. Uh, yeah. And, okay. Um, yeah, and and uh, you know, and I really appreciate all you do, like this, because this is for independent yes. artists. You know, we try to get mm -hmm. out everywhere we can, and and right. um, and we are, we do have, you know, we've been lucky enough to have, you know, we had, we were like in the top ten, top five, down in a couple stations in Australia, here in, in Naples, and. You know, a few other places, uh, you know, Scotland, Ireland, my friend Sean Coyle, great, you know, plays our stuff all the time. So, you know, we, we have, we're, we have like an international thing. People like sort of forget mm -hmm. there's a whole other world there, right? You know? Right. They do. So, they do. And, you know, and South America loves rock and roll. I mean, you know, you, oh, see, boy. you, know, you see Brazil, you see like that, you know, Coldplay album. I mean, you know, it's like, Skinner uh, can do 100,000 people in Buenos Aires. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's amazing, you know. My my stuff, my last CD, only sold in Europe. I sold very few in the United States because mm -hmm. I only focused on that market. This time I'm trying to do both, but you got to start somewhere. Right. And and Europe is so open to everything. Mm -hmm. They like all kinds of music, and they like independent artists especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're not I stuck on Cirrus Radio. Yeah, they're not, and it, I think um, they don't care how old you are. You know what I mean? I, no, I they don't. This, I saw this band in Prague, and it was like, that lead singer was. What is he, 80? <laughs> but he was good. He was like, I know, it was up there, you know what I mean? Gained a little weight, you know, sort of bald and stuff, you know? <laughs> but I, don't I gotta think say, of the I, bad stuff. What did he have going on for him? He could, he could sing. sing. He could sing, boy. He could <laughs> sing, and he got that crowd going crazy, you know what I mean? So, and that's the thing. And, you know, so. I mean, and then we're looking for, we have, yeah, actually there's a couple of band people guys that are up, they're getting on the bandwagon here and yes. uh, got a couple of guys, bass player, another guitar player. Um, this is from Robbie's friends and my grandson who is, turns 18 in a couple of weeks, in a week, um, is a phenomenal drummer. I mean, he's like off the chain. Good. Like really good. Is that right, Robbie? Better than us. <laughs> that, that boy he needs good. to join you. <laughs> Well, that's well, right. I, See, it makes us look young. Makes us yeah, look young. Yeah. Just put the camera on the kid. <laughs> yes. Put that camera right on him. I love those guys. They're so yeah. young looking. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see that drummer. Yeah. What's with that's the drummer, drummer getting the whole, all that? <laughs> oh, that stage 90, time. 90% of the film. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean, he's, I, and I'm not saying it because he's my grandson. I mean, anybody. There you watched, are. Yeah, you are. No, 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 no. I'm just. No, saying, I think he's great too. So that's. I know when your when your friend saw him, your your bass player friend. What would he say? Uh, uh. Well, I oh can't my... really say what he said. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except uh, the the word one word was amazing. So the other words yeah. were. Yeah. You know. It started with an F, and that's all we're gonna say. And, and S and D and yeah. yeah. Ho holy crap and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It scares me for sure, but. He's, he's well he he's been playing since he's three and a half I mean, wow and, you know and i mean really and he practices all the time and he's really good and it's so funny because he's so confident he's just like you know oh yeah let me go up go. Well, that's good that he's confident he's so well, he's, it out. he's gonna need it yeah well I, and the thing is the thing is not like it's not like he's cocky you know what i mean he's no, just, no, com he's just, just confident confident because there's a difference like, because he plays all the time and he's like mm -hmm. practicing and he does all these things to get better and better and better his timing is great, you know, so, you know, if uh, when we get things going to do some touring and stuff, you know, I said, well, if you want to come on with us, is that a high school? Perfect. 
you know, come on, let's do some yeah. tours. It's got no tours. life. That's that's what we're looking for. Somebody yeah. with no life. <laughs> <laughs> we want that guy. Yeah. That kid. The kid. Bring on the kid. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll no life and old guys. That's us. Yeah. That's it. We might change the name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he might. <laughs> So, is there yeah. anything else that you want to tell the audience out there? Well, if um, you know the uh, we do have hard copies uh, if they want a CD. I know a lot we don't buy a lot of CDs, but a lot. A lot yeah, there's of a that, link. There's a link on the website to buy directly from me, and right. it sends an email to the band, and uh, we'll you get it to them. I send it to we'll you, and then if you yeah. want a CD, and then if you want to download it, it's nine dollars. It's not like a lot of money. You know what I mean? So you can help a band out. No, it's uh, six ninety three. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. So don't I overprice thought... the stuff. <laughs> what six ninety three, was... Crystal? Don't listen. Okay, six ninety three. Was that what it is? Yeah, you just. I bought me. it. I should know. <laughs> well, I. That's okay. a fair price. I, I'm mixed up. It's okay. very okay. fair. Very fair. It's very That's... fair, and everyone needs to get a copy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. And You're you welcome. Won't... And you won't be disappointed, I promise. You won't be. Really... Money back I've heard guarantee. some of the songs, and they're great. All right. Yeah, Thank you. They, they are. are. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're Thank welcome. You. All right. Thank okay. you for coming on, and thank you, everyone out there, for watching. And anyone that wants to come on the Crystal Starn Show, just go to crystalstarnshow.com. And I will get back to you. I hope you all have a good evening. Take care, everyone. All right. Bye, Crystal. Thank you so much bye. for having Crystal. us. All bye right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.